Today, we're gonna to be talking about maximizing the heat from our wood stoves. This is the first of four parts on tips on how to maximize the heat from your wood stove. Now, why is this important? Well, it's really important because if you're like me, your primary source of heat comes from your wood stove. My second source of heat is my oil burner, but I try to use that as less as possible. So what we have is we have two wood stoves in the house. This is the wood stove we have in the family room. And uh, this, this stove will actually heat the family room, uh, the kitchen, and another room we have, which is our dining room that we use now as a uh, pool table room. So let's talk about, uh, about uh, a few things here. Number one is, what is the airflow in our house? So you might say, why is that important? I had no idea that my house had a certain airflow where the, where the uh, air would go from one room to another and because I didn't know that, I never was able to really control it. So about a year ago, I started doing some uh, serious research on wood stoves, maximizing the heat from wood stoves, how to move heat, how to block heat, how to uh, prevent cold from coming in one room, and it was fascinating. So I'm gonna share with you today four tips that might help you and uh, allow you to not have to do all that research yourself. So first, let me take you over to our um, kitchen area to the living room area. So we have our kitchen and family room. And what this is here is this is the um, entryway into the living room. So now we talked about airflow. So tip number one, tip number one, know your home's airflow. Know your home's airflow. How do you do that? Really simple. Okay, you don't have to buy any machines or anything. Basically, I had this set up from before. And all this is is a simple tissue and with two pieces of cellophane tape on it. And uh, we're going to stick this here at the top of the entryway and we're going to, um, this will allow us because this tissue is just so light, it just flows very, very easily. And what you can see here is that the, that the airflow, there is no airflow, so the tissue just sits pretty vertical right here. But if any kind of airflow starts hitting it, you can see how it moves. So let's see if there's any airflow here from room to room. Well, you might be surprised in your own home if you start taking and you go from room to room and you start putting uh, tissues, okay? My wife wasn't crazy about it the first time I discovered this and I started putting tissues into, uh, from every room to every room just to understand that airflow. And, uh, and, I, and I really learned a lot about our home. So I'm just gonna show you a small example here. I just put this up and you could see that tissue is at a pretty good angle, right, moving. Uh, just because of that heat that is moving from this room, from our family room, into the living room. Okay, so that's telling me a lot. That's telling me that air is being displaced from this room into that room. Okay, but now remember, if air is going into a room, air also needs to be replaced. So where is it being replaced? Well, there's actually cold air coming down, so the hot air is going in, the cold air is coming out. And that's exactly what you want. You want cold air to come into this room and go and eventually make its way back to the wood stove. The wood stove heats that air and it creates a beautiful current that comes out and it just keeps heating that air over and over again. And in a minute, in one of our future tips here, um, if you watch the next video, you'll see some tips on actually uh, make, accelerating that, making that happen more efficiently and faster. But right now, what I wanted to talk to you about is just room to room airflow. So again, you could see that tissue, you could see that it's indented towards the, uh, towards the living room. Now, what, what does that mean? That means that there's ways to encourage that airflow and to make it happen faster. We'll talk about that uh, on a future video, but also there's ways in this video we're gonna talk about how you can actually prevent that airflow from happening. How do you prevent it? What if you, want the, what if you don't want that heat to escape and you wanna keep that heat concentrated in a certain area? Well, you can do that by simply just closing a door, right? So if you walk this way and, and I have a door here, and I just close this, if I put a tissue here, I can guarantee that the, the tissue, because this room was closed, I opened it just for this video, the, the tissue would start bending in because the heat is going in this room and the cold air is coming out. Now, if I wanted to heat that room, yes, you wanna do that. But if I don't wanna heat that room, the easiest way, just shut the door, right? Shut the door. Now, think about it. This room here is a lot smaller, a lot less air that needs to be heated, so, so, so it, makes, uh, it makes the wood stove's job a lot easier. However, how are you gonna do it when there is no door? Well, I'll show you. I'll show you something that I discovered and it works really, really well. 
basically what it is, is we'll take this curtain here, and I bought this curtain, this is a simple shower rod. Um, it's a uh, stainless steel shower rod, and I, I bought this curtain here, and it's a regular curtain, uh, kind of matches the walls a little bit, and I actually bought a little bit thicker stock. You can see here, it's a little bit thicker. It's kind of a no light penetration curtain, and that way it allows the curtain to uh, have a little more uh, weight to it and a little more ability to block airflow. And what we do is, when we, right now we're on vacation, we're on holiday, and we want all the rooms to be equally warm. However, when we're working and we're just mo spending most of our time in the family room, in the kitchen, and in our uh, pool table room, I will block, I'll purposely block the airflow and keep that wood stove on, and then this room will go up close to 70 degrees, this area, but then it'll block the heat from entering the other room that we just saw where the tissue was. It'll block the cold air from coming in this room and then contains the hot air into this room more. I'll show you what we did on the other side too to kind of take the same effect. We actually now have another, uh, this is the second area where, th this is where I was telling you about the dining room that's been changed into a pool table room. We want this area also to be heated normally. Uh, so what we'll do here is I'll actually take this curtain and now this rod here is a little more substantial. It's a heavier duty. You can see that's a pretty long distance. I'd say that's about uh, maybe six or seven feet. So uh, if you're interested in what rod it was, again, I did some research and had to order a couple of rods and return a couple of rods through Amazon to get the right rod. And if you're interested to know which rod it is, let me know and I could save you a lot of grief because this rod's been up all season and it'll stay up there till April when I decide to take it down. And, uh, and it never comes down once. It's very, very rigid. Um, but, but what we did here is I put the more decorative side of the curtain on the other side because the other side is where we spend our time. And then this side is the, um, the, the side that is, doesn't have the decoration, let's say. on. But what that does, it keeps that side of the house uh, much warmer at around uh, 70 degrees. And then this side here where the wood stove is not on, it'll be about 56 degrees. We're not here, so we don't care, and we really get to contain our heat that way. And now we do have, so, that, so that's tip number one, control, know the airflow, and then that allows you to control the airflow in your house from room to room and be able to encourage airflow and to be able to uh, contain airflow, right? And that's really important for some of the next videos we'll be talking about. The last thing I'll, I'll show you is that just from far away here, you can see there's another wood stove there. Again, we have both wood stoves on today um, to heat this side, but normally um, we just have one wood stove going and that is enough to keep that whole side of the house pretty warm. Now we got both on, so, uh, so, so, so we have both sides pretty warm. So uh, hopefully this was uh, helpful to you. This is our uh, first video of a part of four. And what we'll do is uh, we'll actually now uh, continue and also film the other three tips. So that way if you watch all four, you'll have all four tips of maximizing your wood stove. And this is our first video, my first video that I've done, not only on wood stoves, my first video on YouTube. So I hope you can subscribe. I hope that you can add some comments and any other tips some of you experts have because I've learned from a lot of you YouTubers who have some videos on, uh, on and uh, thank you for that. Um, and also, I uh, hope we can get some likes and, uh, and I'm looking forward to communicating and sharing some more tips with you.